I called him out. No one wanted to fight this guy. He just destroyed Lomachenko. Lopez, you know what it is now? Two warriors, two lions. Let's go to war. Get away. Get away. Head off. Hey. Shut the fuck up. The build up was perfect. These belts are your curse. This bad blood started a long time ago. When I really believe something, then they can't deny me. One of the most dramatic fights I've ever witnessed. The dream was bigger than anything. The legacy is bigger than anything. It's a defining moment. You know, the, the thing is, with my upbringing, I was playing rugby league, I was always wanting to be a footy player. I started to put on a lot of weight. I was bullied at school, you know, and as a kid, you'd go to school, you're overweight, you're not fitting in with, with the cool kids. She was a little bit quiet, you saw like becoming a little bit isolated, and I was just wondering what's going on, and he just says, oh, Dad, you know, like, um, you know, kids pick on me, they call me fat. It's a time where, you know, you think to yourself, do I even want to go to school? We just decided here yeah, one day that, you know, we've got to uh, get this fitness better, and we fall, fell into boxing. First walking up the stairs, the boxing gym, and just the smell of the, of the place, the gym, the bags, run-down kind of place, and it was, it was very, you know, new for me. Day by day as a young kid, as the weight started coming off, the love for the sport really just took over, and, and I couldn't wait to, to be in the boxing gym. After the first few amateur fights, after getting some good victories, I started to realise that, okay, one day I can be world champion. And as I kept progressing more and more, the dream became stronger. My first impression was with discipline, dedication, this, this kid was going to be a good one. You knew that he was something special. The first impression of, of Geordie as a fighter is that he had big kahunas, like big, big kahunas. He'd come to the gym, get some rounds with, with the big boys, you know. I mean, I was, I was a super middleweight. Georgie was a lightweight. True Georgie's nature, he, he held his own, and he, he was a warrior. I saw that warrior spirit from a very early age. I knew he was destined for, for big things. George got his uh, New South Wales title in his third fight. He got his Australian title against Toomey that everyone said George won't beat. It's too early for George to fight. Once we hit cleaned out the Australian boxing scene, the lightweights, Ogilvy's and the, and the Barlers and the top M, there was time to go overseas and test them, George's medal. He started sparring against the best of the best, started uh, mixing up against the hard veterans. I fought for free, I've lost money. I fought for very small amounts of money. If it was gonna be only about the money, like a lot of fighters here in Australia, just focus on, then you know, I would have done that, I would have stayed here. The dream was bigger than anything, the, the legacy is bigger than anything. Making the move overseas, training overseas, fighting overseas, away from our comfort zones, manoeuvring George in the right direction, with the right fights, getting to the Selby fight, gets the eliminator, and this is where it all comes down to now. Our opportunity came in the IBF where I was sitting at number three, and all of a sudden the Eliminator popped up. As soon as the Eliminator popped up, the dream really cemented itself. I said, you know what, we're going to beat this guy. What a win, world number one, mandatory. Lopez, you know what it is now? And that's the fight I want next, unified title shot. I called him out, no one wanted to fight this guy. He just destroyed Lomachenko. You know, he's knocking everybody out. I thought Cambosis is mad. Maybe he's just doing it for hype, but when I really believe something, then they can't deny me. We knew that uh, Tio was a champion. We knew that uh, he beat Lomachenko. He did it in style, dangerous fighter. But this is what we want. This is what we work for. We've worked for this opportunity. George has worked for this his whole life. The initial attraction to this fight was to try and bring Teofimo Lopez to DAZN. Little did we know that, that George would tear up the script. I've been visioning this oh, on the late night runs, you know, as a young 11, 12 year old, running at night, late, 
and just thinking that one day I'll be here before I call the bills. So, um, it's not news. I've been here, I've dreamt it, I've seen it. Yeah, the first time we ever locked eye to eye, obviously we'd met before that and as everything was nice and friendly and then we got to face off and, and actually go eye to eye, looking to a soulless kid, a kid that I knew could be broken very easily. This bad blood started a long time ago, a long time ago. You know, his father's very, very uh, you know, crazy. He likes to try to get into the uh, heads of the opponents. He did get into Lomachenko's head, but you know, my father has got my back. Go both heads! You're gonna get your ass kicked! All of a sudden I hear Lopez Senior's voice coming and it's getting closer and it's getting closer. <laughs> First round, <laughs> You saw that shit, right? You saw that shit, bro. Well, didn't that turn out to be a embarrassment on his end? You want to walk across this shit line? Hey, you I'm got gonna, him down. I'm gonna fuck you up first. When I saw the video between Cambosis' team mixing it up with Tiafimo Lopez's father, I was like, oh, not, it might get too far because Lopez's father is legitimately crazy. Fuck you, motherfucker! You and your coach, you pussies. You got an MMA coach. You got an MMA coach. You got an MMA coach, bitch. Boxers and teams are encouraged to sort of try and play up a little bit. I don't like that. I like it when it's passionate, when it's real. Don't look at me like that, boy. We showed that we are here to fight. No matter if we're in your hometown, we're not taking a step backwards. It doesn't matter if it's one of us. It's against the whole stadium. We're here to fight. We'll, we'll go for every man to, uh, to get what's ours. Everything was at boiling point. Everyone was walking around on eggshells, and there was a lot leading up into this fight, a lot. We are ready to go on Saturday night here at Madison Square Garden. There was no feelings around fight week from the media, from people involved in boxing, that George Cambosis would actually win this fight. My eyes don't lie. See, my eyes don't lie. Trying to get away. Get your head off. Get your head off, no, no, no. Get your head off boy. Well, after Tiafimo Lopez beat Lomachenko, his whole world changed and the whole perception about him changed. Not only was he outboxing the likes of Lomachenko, but he had so much power and he was so massive for the division. He was just a tiger and you were expecting him to, you know, just eat right through Cambosis without much problem. I love being the underdog. It keeps that hunger, that motivation there to keep proving people wrong. You know, the odd makers can do whatever they want. They can have me, you know, 100 to 1. Beautiful. All my friends are going to make money. He flicked the switch in the changing rooms to, to turn himself into that guy who was ready for war. I said, go out and just do it, mate. Just go out and you show the world and obviously yourself, first and foremost, who you are tonight. You're going out there, everything you've done, you're going to put it out there. Yeah. I've dreamt of this you know, countless of times. I've thought about this so many times on the late night runs, on the early morning runs in the hard, you know, sparring rounds in the gyms all around the world. I've dreamt of this moment, and the moment's here. Well, Tiafimo Lopez, when he came down, it was like Mardi Gras, you know, down in New Orleans. It's his hometown, New York. He's from, I believe, Brooklyn, right down the street, and they were all hooting and hollering and screaming for him. This crowd just booing him. 6,000 people, absolutely hometown Brooklyn, New York. Bill and George Cambosis. Stood on the, uh, the end of the apron. I looked at them all one last time. I took a deep breath and I said, this is my moment. I'm here to win this fight by any means necessary. George was just walking around pumped in the ring, you know, sort of psyching himself up. And both guys were really highly charged. Doesn't get much bigger than this. Round one. Tiafima Lopez came out of the corner in the first round like Usain Bolt out of the blocks. I mean, he went right after Cambosis, and Cambosis wasn't scared. Cambosis is throwing a shot. They've been showing how weak. Good little counter left from Cambosis. He told the world he was going to end that fight in the first round. And after a minute, I would have bet that he was going to end that fight in the first round. 
No big right hand connected right on the chin from Tiafimo. I knew he'd come back crazy. I knew I'd weather the storm. He landed a couple good shots. Campos is just eating these right hands. Heavy shots. You could hear the punches thudding against the chest and and the, the ribs of George Cambosis and the side of the head. I set him up, I waited for him to make that mistake. He got heavy on the front foot, I took that double step backwards like I've been doing my whole career, and boom. Ah, what a right hand! I was like, ah! You know, it was so unexpected. It was almost like you're at a haunted house and the thing jumps out at you. You didn't expect it. I was out of my seat, I was like, boom, brah, you know? I was like, yeah, my brother. Everybody stood up in that crowd. Everyone went quiet. Everyone thought, that's not supposed to happen. That punch changed everything. He stamped his authority on that fight, as if to say, no, Tiafimo, not tonight. And then all of a sudden, Lopez jumps up, and I remember thinking, what's gonna happen now? And then the next shot I came flying in when I slipped over his front leg was an even more devastating shot, but his senses were awake at that stage, and that's when the fight really began. You saw me when that bell went, I looked him in the eyes and said, hey, now we're here to fight. That first round was one of the most incredible things I've ever witnessed in boxing. I don't think he was hurt that bad. He was more embarrassed than anything. So now he's thinking, what's my plan B? Those guys did not have a plan B. Round uh, two onwards is when the fight really started. I got to show everything I had. The game plan was, was beautiful to a T. Pick him apart, work off that beautiful jab, ca jab, catch him with the left hook, catch him to the body, rip him over with, with the right hands, and just pick him apart. He was more active, he was more accurate, and he was hitting him with some power shots. It was uh, impressive to watch. The amazing thing about George's performance was he did a bit of everything. You know, he boxed, he sat in the pocket, he traded, he boxed on the inside, he boxed off the back foot, but he was winning rounds. So as those rounds are ticking by, his old man in the corner is giving him the worst trainer's advice, trying to get him up, lying to him. You start looking in Tia's eyes, Tia knew that his dad's bullshitting to him. Tia knew that, hold on, what you're telling me is wrong. I know that I'm losing this fight, and this guy is literally boxing my head off. The feeling in the arena, to me, the sensation I had was just like, I want it to end, but I don't want it to end. I want to see someone land the knockout, but I was enjoying it so much. One of the best fights I've been able to, to call. Tia Fimo is very talented. You cannot switch off with guys like this for one moment. Everyone's well aware of Tia Fimo's power, and he can turn the fight at one moment. The first thing that I thought was, it's over because George looked tired, he looked hurt, and we all know how good Tiafimo Lopez is at, at finishing. Thoughts of my grandfather, thoughts of, of my family, thoughts of my kids, thoughts of, of everyone that's been on this hard road with me. No chance this fight ends like this. Show how great you are. Get up, finish this fight. That's what I did. Let's see how much kickboxes has left. We were gonna see how hurt he was when he got up, and Lopez wasted no time and continued to hammer away. I knew that he was going to come guns blazing when he put me down and I feel that he would have stopped any lightweight in the world at that stage. It would have been too much, but not this warrior, not this guy that was ready to die inside the ring. He dug his heels in, he landed some shots back, he took a few more and the bell went. There was a big feeling in the arena that the fight had just swung on its head in round 10. I was thinking, this isn't over. The next two rounds, whoever wins these two rounds is probably gonna win the fight. Any other fight I believe would have said, you know what, I've done enough tonight. I've earned my paycheck, I've earned my respect. I was there to win. I was ready to go out on the stretch. I was ready to, to die in that ring to win this fight. So, did what I had to do as a warrior, survive the round, come back strong, and round 11, 12, put on a masterclass. He is now possibly one round away from the biggest win in Australian boxing history. All those years, all those one percenters, all those training that he, he never cheated himself, it always shows in the later rounds, I'm gonna close out this show in style and did in the ever.
Australia's got to be going crazy right now. And the most incredible thing happened. George Cambosis won rounds 11 and 12. And to come back and win those championship rounds after being put down was incredible. Incredible. And that won him the fight. just fought the fight of his life. I'm all about earning my respect, showing what I am as a fighter, and that's what I did. I knew I'd won the fight. 115-111, George Cambosis Jr. When the bell went, I thought, I hope they don't rob him. 114-113, Teofimo Lopez. There was no way, in my mind, that Teofimo Lopez won that fight. I've always pictured that I was going to lift him up in the air, I was going to have a tear in my eye, I was going to look at my son from below and say, mate, you are now a world champion. Now what a moment, a moment that you dream about your whole life to hear that and then you. The belts are coming on us, you know, my wife's in the ring then, my, my team's there with me and just uh, so many hard years. And that's that dream that we never lost sight on, you know, it's here now. We've done it. He was in the right place at the right time, came in with the right attitude and pulled off one of the great stunners in Madison Square Garden history. One of the great victories I've seen. All of us in the sport were very, very proud of him. Young Greek kid from, from Australia, he's had nothing but a dream. People just thought it was out, out of his league. To get that win was like, it's a de defining moment. This was a moment that not just changed George Cambosis' life, but changed the trajectory for Australian boxing. We all get knocked down, but do we stay down? Some do. It's about how you rise, how you get up and say, okay, I'm here, I'm up, I'm gonna fight through the adversity and go for whatever I need to in life to, uh, to come out the other side, and that's what I did.